Hey, what's up? This is uh, Jay Lane, uh, Vader artist since 2010. here in Boston with my group Primus. I'm gonna play tonight at the Orpheum Theater. And uh, I'm using Vader sticks, man. Best sticks, man, check it out. I, I think, you know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, um, uh, my mom was always uh, wanting to, uh, I, I was adopted and my mom wanted to encourage uh, my creativity and uh, so I was nine years old. She took, she drove me around to a few different places to uh, to see if I wanted to take musical lessons on a, like a piano or, or or whatever kind of instrument. And we finally we went around to a few places. Or like the one of them was like a Yamaha piano school with like all these kids in a little piano lab or whatever. And I was not feeling that. And then we finally ended up at this guy's. Uh, private little studio is like a rock and roll drummer guy named Bob Rose in San Francisco and he had like a little like a you know total 70s recording studio with all, all muffled and, and stuff and little you know yeah the drums all mic'd up and, and I was like yeah this this is it but um I I, I think I'd probably at the around the same time you know Buddy Rich used to be on TV a lot you know back on the like like Back, back then, like, it was like 74, like I was nine years old, there was like, there was drums on TV all the time, man. It was like, uh, uh, I'm thinking, that not, not the Johnny Carson show, I never was up that late, but, you know, whether it was, uh, I just remember seeing Buddy Rich on TV and it was so cool, man. You know, the, the, and so I, you know, probably like everybody else my age is like, like, wow, you know. So, you know, I, I Took some drum lessons. Then I bought I bought a kit off my drum teacher I had at the house. So when when you know I wasn't practicing, and my mom said, right, "You're not gonna take drum lessons. I'm not gonna pay if you're not practicing." So 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 I I, I wasn't taking lessons anymore. But I still had the kit at my house. I used to set up the stereo my stereo speakers like right in front of the kit and like blast them as loud as I could and like jam along. And then when I was in junior high school. Um, I had a jazz band, the junior high school jazz band. Well, there was actually music in the schools back then uh, in San Francisco. Uh, this was like sort of like the last years that there were ever music in the school, public school system. And uh, I had a uh, jazz band uh, teacher named Jerry Logos, a tenor sax player that turned me on a weather report in uh, 1979, man, when I was like, you know, 15 or 16 years old. And I was like total fusioned out, like weather report at 15 and 16 years old, like completely all about Peter Erskine and Jocko, you know, that was it. And uh, a few years later, I realized chicks weren't into that stuff, and I was like, man, if I, if I wanna, if I, if I wanna, like, meet chicks, man, I better start listening to some different kind of music, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, you know, at the time, it was like the 80s, and then I got into Prince, and I, I George Clinton in Parliament, Funkadelic, it was all funk, funk, funk. And um, and also uh, Pink Floyd, you know the trippy Pink Floyd kind of stuff. So I was I was into psychedelics and, and living in the city. So I listened to a lot of Tower Power. Garibaldi was a huge influence on me at the time. Tower Power because they were a local band. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Those were like the, the big bands for me, man. And uh, and then. Uh, my mom was cool enough to send me to a music and arts summer camp um, uh, called Casadero Music Camp. It was up in the Russian River, north of San Francisco. And I met a bunch of kids there my age that were also musicians. Uh, a couple of them uh, were the sons of uh, famous uh, local San Francisco jazz drummer, Eddie Marshall, who just recently, unfortunately, passed away. Uh, and they uh, and he 
were a huge influence on me. Eddie, Eddie played with Bobby Hutcherson, uh, Toki, Toshiko Akiyoshi, but he was a tremendous jazz drummer. And uh, so, you know, I, I had a lot of like jazz and, and stuff, uh, you know, uh, exposed at an early age. And, um, and because of that, the, the music camp was uh, run by the city of Berkeley. So I was in San Francisco, so I met all these kids in Berkeley. And then, uh, came back after the summer and I got in a band with some of these kids from Berkeley called the Uptones and it was like a band of high school kids, a ska band in Berkeley and I was in that band for a couple years then I joined another band uh, by this time I was out of high school and I was just kind of living in Berkeley I joined another band called the Freaky Executives it was like an eight-piece funk band, ska, funk ska band um, that, um, that was very popular in the Bay Area and uh, we used to rehearse at a studio that a lot of bands rehearsed at in Emeryville. Uh, and I met Les Claypool from Primus uh, in the hallways of that studio. And just through the scene, you know, the East Bay music scene. And, um, and you know, I used to hang out with uh, the, the uh, drummers, uh, Peter Libby and Curveball, the drummers that were in Primus before I was in it and I used to go hang out. And then, uh, and then Les asked me if I wanted to join Primus. I was like, sure. All I had to do was go right around the corner into this other studio. And, uh, and we, you know, rehearsed a lot. We played, played a few gigs. I, was, I played with them for about eight months. This was 1988. And, um, and then he wanted me to, he wanted to go on the road with it, but I, I was committed to this other band I was in. So that's, and, and the guitar player had a kid. So he didn't want to go on the road. So that's where Les was on his own. He got Larry and Herb. The rest is history. Primus, as you know it. And then years later, uh, you know, we just started jamming again. And years and years and years and years went by. Actually, uh, Les introduced me to uh, Rob Wasserman, bass player, a stand-up bass player who was playing with uh, Bob Weir from The Grateful Dead at that time. And then I, it's like 93 now, I joined their duo and I've been playing with Bob Weir ever since, till uh, just last year. And um, uh, 17 years of playing with Bob Weir. And then uh, I got the call to come play with Primus again. So I've had a very lucrative uh, and lucky, and, and I'm very thankful. I've had a great uh, musical career so far, and, and life is good. I was real nervous about this Primus gig, because you know, uh, the two drummers that were in Primus before me, not the two I was talking about, like they were in before me, before 88, but since then, it was Herb Ale Tim Herb Alexander and Brain, uh, uh, Brian Mantia, uh, top-notch drummers, man, like the, the incredible drummers. And I was really nervous last year, stepping in the shoes of these guys. And uh, just like, I just, I started going through a lot of sticks, you know, I gotta find the perfect stick. And, you know, I think about half of it was just me needing to practice and stuff too. But uh, I, I went through a lot of sticks, man. And uh, Chad uh, from Vader was nice enough to send me a bunch of sticks to try out. And I eventually, I, I was like, well, you know what? If I can't play this with, with the regular 5A, then there's something wrong, you know? So let me just go with 5As, 5As. Then I started perusing the website and like looking at all the different sticks and looking at what artists play what stick. You know, it's like, ooh, that guy plays that stick, you know? And I went down the whole list of artists and I was looking at what sticks they play and looking what are the most commonly used sticks, you know? Like the 5B and the uh, Matrix and the uh, Fusion stick seem to be real popular. And, uh, and then, uh, and then I came on this stick. I, I, I came down to this stick. I was like, "What's this? This is a new one they got, the 52nd Street Jazz Stick." And so I was like, "Ooh, that looks cool." And so I thought I'd try them out, and they're great. And these are great sticks, man. And uh, you know, I found because on, on this gig, it's like the, the Primus gig. It's like it's, it's a combination of 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 like of kind of hitting hard, you know, aggressive playing but also like, like a, lot of, a lot of fast, intri intricate stuff. And, and it's kind of hard to do like with a bigger stick. So I, I found, you know, I didn't, I'd be sh shredding through the really, really skinny sticks, 
but you know these these 52nd Street uh, jazz sticks seem like they're the perfect one, you know, for that. So I'm sold. It's the one right here, man. Most of the songs I'm just playing regular drumsticks on the main kick drum, but some songs we were going for like a kind of. Uh, like a different kind of sound. On, on, and, and on the new album, new Primus album, there's a couple songs uh, where I'm playing with the bamboo splash stick and, uh, and, uh, and the auxiliary kick drum uh, with a vintage bomber beater, also by Vader. So yeah, man, thanks for checking it out. And I'm Jay Lane from Primus and uh, Vader Drumsticks, baby. Let's show you this crazy old pickle for a nickel. I must say, rip or not. He tried to show a girl off 